served as a mayor of Phoenix, Arizona, one of the largest cities uh, in America, and I would politely argue that climate change issues facing our city uh, are as dramatic as anywhere else uh, in the country. So much of the attention is on the coastal communities and should have a lot of attention on the coastal communities, but extreme heat and drought in Arizona and in Phoenix are uh, incredibly difficult issues that we are uh, dealing with. So uh, I want to talk a little bit in that uh, context. Uh, Ms. Scarlett, we're working, the City of Phoenix, working very closely with Nature Conservancy on river management in our uh, community. City of Phoenix is investing local tax dollars, not just on infrastructure in our city, but actually investing in river management. Uh, outside of our city, in, in some cases, hours outside of our city, because the, the quality of the rivers and the quality of the water that we receive are one uh, in the same. We're also investing in forest management. The city of Phoenix is working with a lot of no, uh, nonprofit entities to make sure that we have this, the strongest forest system possible, because that also impacts the quality of our water. And I want to talk a little bit about as we make important infrastructure decisions here on this committee, and we're gonna we're going to because it's so critically important that we do an infrastructure bill for America, um, the movement of water, the efficient movement of water, um, particularly from sources of water that may be stronger than other areas. In, in Arizona, obviously, Colorado River is a diminishing resource. Tragically and sadly, we've got to deal with it. Uh, moving water uh, from uh, other entities that may be in a stronger water position is a critically important infrastructure item. And maybe, I don't know if you're in a position to uh, talk a little bit uh, about that as um, water management, water movement as a part of any larger infrastructure bill. Or any of the panelists, please. Uh, yes, I can speak to that. Thank you very much, uh, both for the partnership with the Nature Conservancy and your broadening to recognize the connectivity between cities and the surrounding countryside. Um, you know, the, the Nature Conservancy has a big emphasis on what we call water funds, which is precisely to work with cities to recognize a lot of their water sourcing comes not from the city itself, but from outside. And so um, in a number of cities, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, uh, elsewhere, we are working with cities to take their water district funding and actually invest in watershed restoration to benefits improve water quality and less sedimentation, but also a lot of that work is fuels treatment, that is improving forest health to reduce risk of catastrophic wildland fire. But in places like Phoenix, we're also doing a lot of work on things like uh, groundwater uh, recharge, uh, water banking, so that you have better sort of storage of water in a natural way to then uh, be better positioned to withstand changes in water availability. So there are a lot of different tools. We think you need them all. I appreciate that uh, very much because, again, I'm, I'm going to certainly be an advocate for thinking about water and water planning and movement of water, efficient movement of water, uh, as one of the critically important infrastructure investments that we are likely uh, to make. The other thing I was lucky enough to do as mayor was pass a significant uh, public transportation infrastructure initiative, a 35-year, $32 billion plan that supported um, much improved bus transportation, uh, new investments in light rail, 60 miles of light rail, bikeability, walkability, uh, et cetera. And the next question is for Mr. DeGood. I apologize if it's already been asked before. Uh, for those of us who work so passionately on these issues, it seems obvious, but I want uh, people watching at home uh, and I'd be able to report back to the people that I represent. Why is public transportation infrastructure investment so critically related to the issue of climate change and fighting climate change? Well, first and foremost, too many Americans simply don't have access to other options beyond driving. So whether or not they're trying to go across country or whether or not they're trying to go a quarter mile away to pick up some groceries for that week, they have to drive. And so part of what you were able to do as mayor was to set that city on a different trajectory to where you can now plan to have growth around those facilities so that people don't always have to drive to satisfy their daily needs. And we also know, of course, that when you have access to options, your total annual emissions uh, will drop. Your total transportation-related emissions will drop, and that's also critical. Other uh, strategic investments made, obviously solar, uh, moving our entire fleet to alternative fuel uh, vehicles, and changing streetlights to LED. Little things, but these are important infrastructure investments where the federal government hasn't been most recently but needs to be a better partner to local government. Thanks for your testimony. I'll yield back the time. Thank you. Ms. Miller, you're next. Thank you, Madam Chairman. 